In the chemistry department, I make about 37,000, 38,000. Uh, I get paid for 20 hours of work a week, but really we're all full-time employees here. I don't have a second job. I'm not allowed to have a second job. So my appointment is for 20 hours a week. I make, uh, you know, pre-tax about $40,000 a year. Uh, but in reality, I'm usually working 40, usually more hours per week, right? Because there's so much that needs to be done. What it means is that I'm rent burdened, just like, you know, pretty much all of my colleagues out here right now. Um, that means we're paying more than 30% of our wages towards rent and utilities each month. And the tensions uh, pretty much boil down to the fact that the university has committed a huge number of unfair labor practices at the bargaining table. You just heard from academic workers within the UC, meaning the University of California system. And this is a historic strike to say the least, the largest strike of UC workers in history. And I love the fact that they're speaking out because as you can imagine, it's incredibly expensive to live in a state like California. And when you are an academic worker, meaning you have <laughs> your, you have, the credentials to teach, okay? You're literally doing the heavy lifting to teach at a university level, but you're not tenured and you're not making enough money to just live and have your basic needs met. And that's what they're striking about. 48,000 University of California academic workers, including postdoctoral scholars, postdoctoral scholars, graduate teaching assistants and researchers walked off the job this week in a strike billed as the largest at any academic institution in history. You know, I saw some right wing commentary about this strike and the argument is, well, I mean, if you make the decision to get a worthless degree, what do you expect? Except the degree isn't worthless because they're literally doing the heavy lifting in these classes by instructing the university students on whatever their majors are, mm -hmm. right? Whatever class they're taking within their major. Yeah. John, yeah, I, I don't care what the right wing thinks about literally any strike, especially this one. Oh, I'm shocked they don't care about people who work at universities being yeah. abused. First of all, of course they're not gonna care. It's workers and they despise workers. They're not interested in workers. But in particularly people whose entire job is the, the pursuit or dissemination of information, not interested in any of that. Now, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be. There are plenty of fields in academia that have a right wing slant at the very least, but they've been trained. It's just, it's propaganda. They've been trained to think that universities are, for some reason, inherently left wing, which is simply not the case historically or in the modern era. And so they're not gonna support this. So let's set them to the side. Who the hell cares? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's historic. It's absolutely massive. Uh, hard to imagine how. They don't succeed so long as they can, you know, maintain solidarity. Just the sheer number, like they, the the system can't afford, like they can't replace nearly fifty thousand workers. That's simply too much. It's a demonstration of how scale can be so significant in one of these um, efforts. In the video that was put together, which I guess it was Washington Post interviews. Mm -hmm. So hey, credit to the Washington Post, they're actually going and yeah, interviewing the workers, it, that's awesome. It looked like a video that would have been put together like by More Perfect Union or something. No, it was a great video to um, be fair. And um, while you know the national press hasn't really covered this story much with the exception of the Washington Post, uh, you know, I've had to rely on, on local reporting on, on the matter. There, there has been some journalism around this, uh, but I think, there should be a lot more, especially when you consider the sheer volume of workers mm -hmm. that are striking right now in California, 48,000 to be exact. Um, let me give you some more details uh, because I want you to know about what they're asking for and what they've already rejected uh, from the UC system in terms of pay raises. Uh, this one comment from uh, Safa Hamze, who's a teaching assistant uh, and international doctoral student, just it, it gives the whole game away. And when I say that, I'm referring to how you actually accomplish political goals, okay? This is the strongest tool we have against the administration. When we are striking, we're not grading, we're not attending sections, we're not attending lectures, we're not holding office hours. When that happens, the entire education progress stops. When we strike, you can see that we do most of the work because all of the work stops. So uh, obviously this makes a lot of sense in this context, but it also makes a lot of sense in any other context. The reason why having or, like an organized workforce is a good thing 
is because if you do decide to strike, and if you do have that union protection and they have a strike fund to make you whole while you're striking, well, it first of all informs everyone of just how valuable you are as the worker, as the person in, in most cases generating the revenue necessary for the company. In mm -hmm. this case, they're generating you know, the instruction, the education that these students are paying for. Without them, these classes can't go on, yeah. right? And a lot of the tenured professors are pressured to do research. Like, you gotta do research, you gotta publish, you gotta publish, you gotta publish. And so they do focus most of their energy there. And that's why when it comes to the heavy lifting inside the classroom, it's usually these non tenured academic employees who are doing it, who are doing mm -hmm. the hard work. By the way, real quick, just to give you the details on what they're asking for. Um, surveys by the UAW found that 92% of graduate workers and 61% of postdoctoral scholars were rent burdened. They want to see all graduate student workers who are teaching assistants and tutors earn a base salary of $54,000, more than double these workers average current pay of just $24,000 according to the union. Yeah. That is insane, by the way. We're talking about California, guys. And to be clear, even 45, I, like, I don't know how it's possible. How do you live on $45,000 in California? Well, and that's that's why the, the thing that stuck out to me the most in the video, and I don't know to what extent it's true for different sorts of workers or whatever, but at least one of the people being interviewed said they're not legally allowed to have a second job. Yeah, they're not. I don't know how that's tenable. Insane. I like when I was a, a, a lecturer and TA and tutor and I ran an experimental lab and all that stuff, I waited tables, which is its own issue. I should not have had to do that to survive. It right. definitely held me back in, in my ability to, to do well in the, the academic environment. But at least I could do it and supplement my salary that way. It, like crushing people between low pay, ever increasing rent, let alone they're not, they're not gonna be able to buy, obviously. But even the rent is increasing. And then not, not allowing them to work hard on the side to make it work. It's insane, why? That's just crazy, that, that seems like a layup. but. Makes yeah. no sense. It really, it's it's terrible. But like, I agree with you. I mean, they shouldn't even have to look yeah. for a side hustle or a second job well, just to make ends meet. And even with the the pay that they're asking for, the base salary that they're asking for, they would still need a second job to make ends meet. I can't emphasize enough how astronomically expensive it is to live in California. Yeah. The housing is crazy. You, I mean, it depends on where you're living, but in most parts of California, there is no real public transportation. Mm -hmm. There is some in, in the Bay Area, the BART system is decent. But in if you're in Los Angeles. LA's trying to get some off the ground, but it's not great. Yeah. You need a car, okay? You need to pay for the insurance, you need to make the car payments, you need gas. Like it, You can't survive even on the base salary they're demanding. You probably want to eat food occasionally right. too. Right, that, that could help, you know, you might need that sustenance to yeah. be able to, you know, think when you're instructing students. Yeah, and by sure. the way, if I could add to, like as you said, you know, and as has been described by some of those people there, again, the UC system might be different in some ways, but so they obviously do the grading, proctoring exams and things like that. Like literally you, you cannot maintain a class without those things. But bear in mind a lot of these workers will also guest lecture when the professor can't be there. And then even outside of the, uh, they're, they're holding office hours and tutoring sessions and all that. But outside of the acad academic part, on the, the research part, which also brings in a lot of money, mm. they do that too. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of those, the professors are not running these studies individually. They're not doing all the research individually. I and other graduate workers were doing that. They do plenty of work and it wouldn't be possible without the professors too. And by the way, they should be paid well. Um, but every, every part of this will lock up without them. And so, and by the way, no, it, not only can they not afford to let this maintain because then students will drop out so they lose the, the tuition money. But what about their accreditation, the reputation of the school? Can they go a semester or two without terrible damage being done to their reputation? No, what stood out to me about how the UC system, and I'm sure other university systems are the same way, but nonetheless, uh, the way the UC system is carrying out their treatment of workers reminds me a lot of Walmart. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Walmart is notorious for paying their full-time full -time workers so little that the government has to subsidize Walmart by paying like social safety net benefits 
to their workers who literally work full time but still don't make enough money to be able to make ends meet. Yeah. Same thing is happening in this UC system, okay, where their academic employees who are probably also drowning in student loan debt, let's not forget that part of it. Yeah. They're having to rely on California programs like CalFresh. CalFresh is the statewide you know, food stamp program. So why are we as California taxpayers subsidizing the bad behavior and the poor treatment of uh, you know the UC system toward its workers. Like, mm -hmm. why? Why are we? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's pretty sick that we're subsidizing this, and so I I don't want academic employees to have to rely on government aid. I have no problem with government aid. I think I'm pretty clear about that. I'm 100% supportive of the social safety net. I want it to be far more robust, but the fact that workers especially like academic workers who are doing the heavy lifting in the classroom. The fact that they have to rely on government programs to make ends meet is sick. And then you also consider how much they're bringing in. The UC system is bringing in through tuition mm -hmm. and how much they're paying their chancellors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, a lot of money, yeah. final point on that. Let's go to graphic eight. The chancellors of the University of California's nine undergraduate campuses each got raises. They each got raises, John, <sighs> okay. Uh, under the action taken by the university's board of regents in January. The raises would range from about 6% to 28%. After the raises, the salaries of the chancellors would range from about oh, just $522,000 to $640,000. Well, they're probably teaching a lot of classes, I assume. Probably grinding it out, grading papers and stuff. They're political positions. What's interesting is uh, the university system has defended the pay raises for the chancellors by arguing, look, we we need to be competitive so we can draw in the best talent. But wait, you don't feel that way when it comes to the actual educators? Mm -hmm. The people who do the heavy lifting within the classrooms? You, you don't think you need to find the best and the brightest? And have like competitive salaries uh, to, to attract the best and the brightest? No, nah, it's sick. The whole thing is sick. So solidarity with these striking workers, I really, really hope they get more than mm -hmm. what they're asking for. Because yeah. you know, even what they're asking for here, I don't I don't know how they would make ends meet on fifty four thousand dollars if they're like living in the Bay Area, right? Yeah. If they're at Berkeley. And a lot of them make a lot less than that. Yeah, so. exactly. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.